Hi and welcome to this Junior Cycle Higher Level Maths Revision video. In this video we're looking at Applied Arithmetic and under that we're looking at Exchange Rates. So we're going to look at converting from foreign to domestic currency, converting from domestic to foreign currency. We're going to look at we buy and we sell rates and finally we'll look at commission. So example one, if one euro is equal to 130 US dollars, find out how many dollars you will get for 450 and how many euro you will get for $800. Now, my number one trick for this is to draw out a little guide for yourself. I'll show you a few different ways to do this um, so you can pick your favourite. Um, if we go from one to the number, we multiply and if we go from the number so the non one number back we divide and it's kind of easy to remember what do you multiply and what do you divide by well if you multiply by one or divide by one nothing changes so it's always the other number so the one that's not one so this gives us an instruction so for part i we have 450 euro so i want to convert from euro to dollar so i'm doing this arrow here it's euro to dollar which means i now am going to multiply not by one because it won't change anything but by 130 and when i do that i'm going to get my answer in dollar so 450 by 130 and i get 585 us dollars now if you're not a fan of drawing that out what other method you can use is your only two options are multiply and divide so if you want to try one then check in this exchange rate dollar is bigger than euro okay so my answer for dollars should be bigger than my starting point of euro which it is which means i must have gone correct i'll show you what will have happened if we did it the wrong way so if we instead divided it by accident because we were stressed in an exam we didn't know what we were doing and we did 450 divided by 130 um, you get 346.15. Now, does it make sense? That's meant to be a dollar sign. Does it make sense that my dollar is smaller than my euro based off this? And the answer is mm, no. So you'd know to go back and change it. Remember, all we have is multiply and divide. So we have one to my number multiply. Now, if we want to look at number two, it asks me how many euros will we get for $800? So we start with dollars. I go back to my little exchanger. I like this way, drawing it out. And we go from dollars back to euro. So we're going to divide. So I'm going to divide it by, and again, what do you divide it by? Well, if you divide it by one, nothing's going to change. And we always want it to change. It is an exchange rate, which means things will change. So dividing it by 130, and that gives me 615 euro. Remember, we are in money, so two decimal places, so 0.38. Double check if you've kind of winged it. Have you done the right thing? Dollars are bigger than euro, which is correct. Example two, on a certain day, one euro is equal to 0 0.87 pounds. Chris is travelling to London tomorrow and wants to change 200 euro into sterling. How much will he get? So we have 1 euro and we have 0 0.87. So to go from euro to pounds, we'll multiply by 0 0.87. And to go from pounds back to euro, we would divide. We have 200 pounds, which means we want to go from pounds into you oh no sorry we have 200 euro so we want to go from euro into pounds so we're going to multiply by 0 0.87 and we get 200 so 200 multiply by 0.87 and we get 174 pounds double check if you want are pounds smaller than euro and the answer is yes so these are called pounds sterling now let's look at a we buy, we sell rate. Now, when we um, 
look at very simplistic examples, the maths is a little bit easier. However, in real life, it's not that straightforward. In banks, we'll get a little table like this that has we buy and we sell. The first thing I tell you to note is everything in this is one euro equals. Okay, so the two rates are, I'll do a little arrows out. So I'm going to write these as exchange rates first. So we get two different exchange rates. And this one is one euro equals. Now, yen looks like a funny Y, so 130 yen. Here we have one euro equals 127 yen. OK, so that's the exchange rates that this table represents. But when do we use which? The we here means the bank. OK, and this means the bank buys and whatever the currency is, in this case, yen. Here, the bank sells yen. Now, if we are, in this case, changing 800 to yen, so here's Tom, he has euro, he wants yen, so he's going to buy yen which means the bank sells yen so when we are doing this 800 we're going to convert using this exchange rate which is multiply divide we're going from euro over therefore we're going to have 800 multiplied by 127. And that gives us in yen 101,600. Okay, so that's how many yen did he receive? He then changed back 2080 yen, 2080 yen back to euro when he returned. Okay. So then Tom has yen, so he's going to sell yen, which means the bank buys yen, which means we're now going to look at this exchange rate. And when we do that, we're going from yen back to euro. So we're going to divide. So in this case, we have 2080 divided by 130 so 2080 divided by 130 and that works out as 16 euro now what you might have noticed is not a coincidence the we sell rate will always go from euro to whatever currency it is in this case we're into yen and then if we want to go backwards, the we buy will always be whatever currency back to euro. So the we sell rate is always multiply and the we buy rate will always be divide. Example four, commission. A Swiss visitor exchanged 4,200 Swiss francs for euros at an exchange bureau. The rate of exchange is one euro equals 1.4 Swiss francs. Find in euro what the visitor received if the bureau charged 1% commission. Okay, let's pull out some information. We start with 4,200 francs. We are given this exchange rate and there is a 1% commission charged. That commission is going to affect the final amount that the visitor receives when they change their money. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my exchange rate, one euro equals. Now, you can write Swiss francs. The symbol is an F with a little extra line through it. So that's our Swiss francs. So to go from euro to francs, we multiply. To go from francs back, to euro we divide. We have 4,200 francs, so we're going to go 
backwards. So we're going from francs back to euro, which means we're going to divide. Remember, we're always multiplying or dividing by the number that's not one, because multiplying or dividing by one doesn't do anything. So we have 4,200 divided by 1.4, and that gives us 3,000 euro. So that is what the visitor should get. However, because this is a business, okay, so changing money, they do this to make money. They then charge a commission. So what they do is they take 1% away from the person changing their money. So we need to figure out well, what will the commission be? So what is 1% of 3,000? And that works out as 30 euro, and that represents the commission. So that is taken away from the money before it's given back. So that 30 is taken away, which means the visitor will get a final amount of 2,000 970. This is useful to see the commission. An alternative way to do this would be instead to say, well, if 1% is taken away, the person changing their money is only allowed to keep 99% of their money. Remember, of means multiply. So we're going to do 99% multiplied by 3000. Remember, if you have a sharp calculator, just be really careful. You want to put that percentage at the end and we get our 2970 with one step rather than the two steps below. Example five. When an exchange rate is one euro equals 128 US dollars, a person is ch a person changes 1,920 US dollars to euro. A charge is made for this service. What is the percentage charge if the person receives 1,462 euro and 50 cent? Okay, so let's pull out all of our information. We have our exchange rate, we have what we started with, and then we have what we end with. We're going to leave the last bit until the end and we're going to treat this question like any other. We have one euro is equal to one dollar twenty eight. This tells us we multiply by one two eight to get from euro to dollars and divide by one two eight to get from dollars back to euro. We start with euro or sorry, we start with dollars. So we have one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars so one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars we want to go from dollars back to euro so we're going to divide we're going to divide by 1.28 and that gives us one thousand five hundred euro okay but this is what they should get, but they only ended up getting 1,462.50. So let's work out how much commission this um, service charged. So we should have got 1,500 euro, but we actually only got 1,462.50. So the actual amount to the commission, so we take these two away. That gives us 37 euro and 50 cents. So that's how much the commission was. They asked us not how much the commission was, but the percentage charge. So to make the percentage commission, we put the commission over what we should have got. So the 37.50 divided by 1,500, and we turn that into a percentage by multiplying by 100 over one. So how do we know which number to put that 3750 over? So we put commission, we wanna make it a fraction first. So we make a commission a fraction with the 1,500 at the bottom. Well, usually we would talk about any percentages as we put the change over the original. So the original was the 1,500, but it may not be clear in this example. 
Another way to think about it that might be easier for this particular example is if I was to tell you that the percentage was 2%, you would find 2% of that 1500. So that will give us our answer. So that's why the 1500, that 1500 is on or is in the fraction, it's the denominator. So here, you don't have to put 100 over 1, you can just do it by 100 if you prefer. Um, but absolutely up to you you'll get the same answer either way when we do this we end up with 2.5 which is 2.5 percent although not an exam question this is very much the kind of thing that could be asked at higher level because of the way that it needs us to work backwards and includes a little bit of work on percentages if you need extra help with the idea of percentages, don't forget to watch our Applied Arithmetic Percentages video. I'll link it in the description below.